Hello everyone, uh, today I'm just going to go through a quick block cut uh, using this roof, uh, seeing as there's a few different features here that we can uh, take advantage of and show you how to do. First off, a block cut uh, is really only useful when you've got a hip and valley roof like we do here. If you've got a, a single slope or a skillion roof, you're better off using the gen panels method, mainly because there's no off cuts from hips and valleys that you can then flip and reuse on other parts of the roof. Uh, generally, the waste factor is very low on a skillion roof anyway. So, without further ado, uh, what you want to do is go to your, your estimate menu and then hit estimate block cutting. Now, if you haven't previously selected a, a metal panel um, like I have here, I haven't selected one yet, uh, it's going to ask me to do that. So, I'm just going to pick a 762 Cori panel. Uh, we'll have it to be announced on the color. Hit OK and we get this. Now, it's worth noting that before you start splitting planes and playing around with it, it's just good practice to just do a, a check model and delete free lines and points. As you can see, there's a fair few spare lines there that we'll, we'll get rid of. That just does a sort of general cleanup of the model, ensures that we're not gonna have any headaches down the line when we start splitting planes and adding lines in and stuff like that. It, it's just gonna complicate the model more, so just trimming that up, cleaning it up can go a long way in just reducing any stress later on. Now, the main technique with a block cut is you want to split the roof down the main ridge and try and simplify it down into a four hip roof. Uh, now, sometimes there'll be multiple four hip roofs in one job, but with the main goal being to simplify the roof down just a four hipper, we will split uh, this end down and, and sort of chop that up there. This end is a little bit simpler because we've got this gable end, um, we don't have to, we can, I guess, imagine it just being a two hip roof and we can tackle these two different types of, of dormers there and there um, in different ways, seeing as they're two different types. Um, one's a gable, one's a hip. So. Uh, to start off, your controls. Now, obviously you're gonna be left clicking, middle clicking, right clicking, you should know that already. With block cutting, uh, when you're applying the planes to the blocks, you're going to be using F1 and F2 um, to rotate the, the planes around, and then F3 and F4 will change which point uh, that your mouse is attached to, uh, and I'll show you that later on. Another thing to note is if you're using a keyboard with function keys, it may be uh, the case that you have to turn off your function key so that F1, 2, and 3 will work correctly. So keep that in mind if you do need to do that as well. So to start off with, uh, I always like to split my, my planes as much as I can off the bat. You don't have to do this to the full extent. You can just start off with the main planes that you need to split and then just go back and split more later. So we're gonna split a plane at a point. Now, whenever I start a block cut, I always look for the highest ridge first, which is this main one here. Now, to begin splitting the planes, uh, all you have to do is read the prompts up here. Uh, for some people, your prompts may be down the bottom, but for me, it's up here. Pretty much, it's just asking you, select a plane that we wanna split. In this case, it's going to be this one here left click that plane now it's going to ask where you want to split it which will be where this ridge line hits the two hips and we're just going to middle mouse button uh, or shift and left click uh, does the same thing just to snap to this point here so our objective here is start with the highest ridge run it all the way down to the eve so we're going to want this plane here and we're going to snap to that point there as well It'll become more clearer uh, the further we go along how that we're sort of making it and simplifying it down into a four hip roof. But any secondary ridges, which is sort of what I call any other ridge that's lower than the main ridge, you can make a, a decent assumption that you're gonna be splitting lines at that point. So at either end of any secondary ridges, we're gonna split. And you can sort of imagine any secondary ridge, there's going to be another block of panels. So we're going to split here and here for the gable end because we can flip these two triangles over into this main, main plane here. And then for this one, because we've already got a triangle in there, 
we don't have to split either either side of this ridge so we can just split there and there not to go into the main plane but to become the secondary block on that ridge there and one more split nice and simple just on the end of that main ridge here now if you do accidentally split a plane let's say we split this one down here by accident you can just go merge planes and merge between these two planes it'll convert it back to one uh, and another thing to know is you've also got split plane distance uh, which is going to allow you to split at a distance and then repeat that split uh, multiple times uh, which I'll, doesn't come into play too much on this model uh, but I'll be I'll make another video down the track on a more complex roof where that's going to be required now that we've split this roof up we can start to define blocks just left click on that now it's gonna say hey what plane do you want to use to define that block now if you hit F1 it's gonna show us where the splits are and gonna define uh, the block based on the plane with the split in it so I'm just going to click that main plane there and I always just start off with the highest ridge uh, because that's going to generally be the biggest block and now that we've selected that block to find it we can now assign our roof planes because there's a gable end here I'm going to start at this end and just make a continuous block all the way across using the sort of main four hip roof if you can sort of picture that uh, and what I need to do here is just rotate it. So going to hit F1 and F2. That helps me rotate the plane. And then I'm going to use F3 and F4 to change where my plane is attached to on my cursor. Then it's just a matter of middle mouse button into the, the block there. And we're going to sort of continue around and fill this space in. So I'm going to use these triangles here I'm gonna rotate it and this one doesn't need to be rotated that can go straight in then this little triangle down here rotate and change my point on there whenever you've got a hip end you're gonna use the flipped side of the ridge so because of this off cuts of all these a1 and a4 planes uh, we're going to use the other side. So if we flip that over Use that one there this triangle here. We've then got a complete block um, Now you can either do one entire long block for the highest ridge or sometimes I'll split it into two separate blocks uh, just to make it look a little neater Now after you've defined you'll see that our block is a little bit short uh, which is okay We can extend that and the way to extend that to the full extent of all the planes is the option down here is extend edge. So we click on that and then it asks us to uh, select what edge of the block we want to stretch. We're going to stretch this one and we're going to move it to there. We're going to just middle mouse button there to move it to there. And you can see now it's the full length of the planes. So that's good. Now we can go to the next block. So we can right click to get back to our block cutting menu. And we can go to the next block letter, which will be B. We're going to reset our block number back to one and go to the next color. Uh, you can also select these three dots to pick a specific color if you like. Um, I've just got my, my color set up so I can just hit next, next, next after each block. Uh, but we'll hit number 14 and define our next block. So I'm gonna hit F1 again, and it's gonna show me what I've already blocked. We're gonna select this one here and right click, and then I can select where to put it with left click and assign planes. And we're gonna use F3 and F4 to change the point. And as you can see, we've got our triangle. Now, instead of using these inside ones here and flipping them, uh, we don't have to do that because it's just a hip end so we can use the end of the hip just like that and that slots in there perfectly and now you can do where the main hip is so we'll put that one in there and b4 in there now you can sort of picture the the four hipper now so so now most of the hard work is done because we've got our two key blocks we can go to our secondary ridges which will 
should each have their own block. So reset all of this. So we'll go to the next block letter, go to the next color, reset our number, define our block, hit F1 so that it shows us what we've blocked previously. And I generally will just go from largest to smallest. So this is the next largest block. Left click on there, right click to place it somewhere and left click to select our location. And then it's just a matter of assigning this one to there. And the good thing about these nice, easy secondary ridges is they should all have their own block. So that fits neatly in here uh, because of the off cut of panels on this hip. And again, extend edge, left click to select that edge and middle mouse button to snap it to its new point. And we'll just repeat that process over until all our planes are taken care of. So on this last uh, secondary ridge we've got here, uh, it looks complicated, but it's it's actually not. We can just define a single block for all of these, and we just sort of cookie cutter them in as we go. We'll use this one first. In there. All these hip and valley planes actually just fit into one neat little block. We could extend edge again, snapping to the new point. Now, our block cut's complete, it looks nice. Uh, now we just gotta go through and put in the legend, which we just select from the menu, place move legend, place it in there. Uh, now it's a bit small and all the numbers are a little bit small. What we can do to make it a little bit more legible is hit view plot scale. At the moment it's 100, I'm gonna make it 150. And you can see that just makes everything a little bit bigger. I'm just gonna move our legend just a little bit and it'll resize based on the new plot scale. And then one last thing I do just to make everything a little bit neater is I hit move text in the main block cutting menu and I can just move all these panel annotations just above the block just to make it just a little bit easier to read. And you can see we've got 25 at six meters uh, and you could do this as one block and just run it all the way across and not split these down the middle. Um, I just do it as, as two just to make it a little bit sort of visually neater. Uh, but the outcome is basically the same. So what we'll do now is right click there and we can right click again to exit that block cut menu. Now once you've completed the block cut fully, you have to make sure that you tally your blocks. Uh, if you don't tally your blocks, when you print your reports and create uh, your cutting list and all that sort of stuff, it's not gonna actually come through to supply only or supply and install, uh, and it won't print out in your report. So now that I've hit tally blocks, it's added them all together. We've got 50 blocks of, of over six meters, 13 just over four meters, 11 on just under three, so on and so forth. And we've got a nice clean cutting list. Our accessories have come through. If we had fasteners, they would come through and we've got 4.26%, so that's 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 good. That's a good result. As I said, anything less than 10 is great. So we'll hit OK there, and now it's just like any other any other job. We can apply our, our flashings, any other materials, and go through to reporting and print our reports. So one thing to note, if you do go to supply only or supply and install, and we can continue here, if you're not getting any roofing materials through here, it will just be because you haven't tallied your blocks. So if you're not getting a result through here, so we've got our curry here under roof. If you're not getting anything there, have a look, tally your blocks, and that should fix it. That's basically it for this style of, of block cut. 
Uh, as I said, I'll do future ones with more complex grooves and specific features that you have to block differently um, just to get the, the most uh, amount of reduced waste. Um, but that'll do for this one. If you have any questions, get in touch. Um, we're always happy to answer. All right, thanks guys. Good luck with your block cuts.